Grappling with the text, Proverbs chapter 7 today, the final warning of the adulterous woman. Let's begin with a prayer. This is a prayer for Advent 4. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Remember how the uh, the book of Proverbs is going to contract. Here's the book of Proverbs in one point font, and especially this first eight chapters of Proverbs is going to contrast wisdom, Lady Wisdom, with the adulterous woman. Now here we have highlighted all the parts of the adulterous woman, uh, the warnings against the adulterous, warnings we wish Solomon would have heeded, and here we see chapter seven. This is the last and great. Uh, discussion of this. Now, uh, it is true that Solomon is warning us against the dangers of adultery. We want to expand it a little bit as we see that in the text. So here we go. We have 27 verses. We're going to try to do them all. My son, begins Solomon, as he likes to begin, keep my words and treasure up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live. Remember this way of life and death. Here's the way of life. And it is the way of the commandments. Now, we know that the law cannot give eternal life. Uh, we cannot keep the law. Uh, there is a different way appointed for eternal life, and that is the way of faith, trusting in the Lord's promises. We make this distinction between law and gospel, and we know and trust that it is in the gospel that we find forgiveness of sins and the righteousness which is in Christ. Uh, there is, uh, though, still the law for the believer, which shows our sin and shows also how we might uh, uh, love and serve God and our neighbor. And that's what Solomon is meditating on, the Christian life of love and keeping the commandments. Keep my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablets of your hearts. This is, again, Deuteronomy 6 and the treasuring of the Lord's word. Say to wisdom... You are my sister, and call insight your intimate friend to keep you from the forbidden woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words. So here we see again the contrast between wisdom uh, and the adulteress. Now the idea is, and here we, we've had this picture over and over again, and we continue to have it, is that we, we are living this life amongst enemies. You know, here here we are, uh, uh, and we are pull, being pulled uh, according to our sinful nature, according to the flesh, and also according to the world, and according to the devil. We're being pulled away from the Lord and his kindness uh, towards death. And yet we're also being pulled according to the Spirit, and according to God's Word, we are now being pulled towards uh, towards wisdom and repentance. And, and this tearing back and forth is what Paul is talking about, especially in Romans chapter 6 and chapter 7. O, o wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Now, Solomon talks about his observing uh, adultery and the temptation of, um, of the adulterous woman. Uh, he says, for at the window of my house, I've looked out through my lattice, and I have seen something among the simple, that is the foolish. I've perceived among the youth... A young man lacking sense. Now, I can't remember if we brought this up before, but uh, Luther Marx and uh, other theologians have made this point as well, that, uh, that temptation comes to us differently in different phases of our, of our life. And especially the youth, says Luther, are tempted with the sins of the flesh, uh, sins of the Sixth Commandment, and so forth. Uh, when we get older, the, the temptation is really the temptation of the world safety, security, um, uh, a wealth, a uh, good name, stuff like this. And for the Christian, the temptation is always from the devil. And the way he attacks us is especially with despair, despair of God's word, despair of God's kindness, despair of the Lord's mercy and forgiveness, uh, especially this. Now here it's talking, we're talking fleshly temptations, because remember Proverbs is especially training the young men. I perceived among the youths a young man lacking sense, passing along the street, 
near her corner, who is the her there, is the adulteress. Taking the road to her house in the twilight, in the evening, at the time of night and darkness. Remember, uh, men love the darkness because, uh, because the light exposed their sin. So he walks, he's walking along the street, not looking for something godly to do, but rather looking for the adulterous woman. And behold, surprise, the woman meets him, dressed like a prostitute, wily of heart, dressed as a prostitute, wily of heart. She's loud and wayward. Her feet do not stay at home. Now in the street, now in the market, and at every corner she lies in wait. She seizes him and kisses him, and with a bold face says to him, so here's the words of the adulterous uh, woman dressed like a prostitute, and this is an amazing thing that she's going to say and something for us to think about. She comes and she says to him, I had to offer sacrifices, and today I have paid my vows, so now I have come to meet you. In other words, I, I've just been at church. I'm very holy, very godly. Uh, I made a sacrifice, and I have some of that sacrifice left over, you know. So, uh, and I've got no one to eat it with. Look, my, uh, my, I'm carrying. Here's the carrying the sacrifice here. You know, uh, my husband's gone, so come and have a meal with me. So now I've come out to meet you, to seek you eagerly, and I have found you. I've spread my couch with coverings. Colored linens from a colored linens from Egyptian linen. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love till morning. Let us delight ourselves with love. For my husband's not at home. He's gone on a long journey. He took a bag of money with him. At full moon, he'll come home. Now, sin finds you. Remember how uh, the Lord warned um, Cain about this. When he came and, and, uh, and said, sin is lurking at the door, seeking you. A lot of times we, we are seeking sin, but we remember that sin is seeking us. And in fact, because of our flesh, sin has found us. We all have um, a sinful flesh, which means we have sinful desires. And when we look at James 1, we, we remember that desire when it's conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is grown, brings forth death. That's James 1. Now, we also know that this desire itself is sin. Concupiscence, we call it. So this is original sin. This is actual sin. And this is, I suppose, death. Now, when we ask the question, what did Jesus die for, our original sin or our actual sin? Well, the answer is yes, in fact. We are died for, not for only the things that we've done, but also for our condition, our completely corrupt condition, which, which has the desires of our heart there full of sin. Now, but this, what this means is, though, that, um, that, that when, when we are tempted, there is an ally, even in our own flesh, for this temptation. Solomon continues his, uh, with the last part of this chapter on his meditation on the Sixth Commandment. With much seductive speech, she persuades him. With her smooth talk, she compels him. All at once, he follows her. And goes, and here we're going to have three pictures, which are terrible, but in fact quite helpful. He follows her as an ox goes to the slaughter, or as a stag is caught fast till the arrow pierces its liver, as a bird rushes into a snare, he does not know that it will cost him his life. Now, I don't know how good I'm going to draw an ox or a stag, or we'll give it a shot. That's what makes these things fun, right? So here's an ox. And it doesn't know. Look, it's just looking innocent, you know. Here, here I am, uh, you know, hauling along, pulling something heavy because I'm an ox, and that's what I do. And all of a sudden, I end up being slaughtered. Or a stag caught fast. You know, here's the deer. This is probably a reindeer. And here, and you know, here, and here it is in the trap, uh, and it's and it's caught. You know, its legs are there, caught in the in the in the trap, and it can't get away. And so it's caught there, so that the the archer can put an arrow right into its heart. Or a bird, you know, going along the twig. And there is a, a snare set up there, and maybe even some bait on it, so that the bird comes along and is going to find this uh, thing enticing. 
and come along and and eat it and 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 die. This idea of chasing along the bait and getting caught up in it is is what it's uh, going to here. The the, uh, the 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 picture, the three pictures that Solomon is giving. Oh, if Solomon would have listened to his own preaching. <laughs> Now, the, the fourth picture that we should probably add to this, and this is a picture not of law, but of gospel, and that is the picture of Christ, who goes not as an ox to the slaughter that doesn't know, or a stag that's caught, or a bird to the snare, but Jesus goes, remember the scripture, Isaiah 53, as a lamb to slaughter. And he goes knowingly. He goes willingly. Jesus says, no one takes my life. I lay it down uh, of its own accord, and because I have the power to lay it down, I have the power to take it up, so that we are stumbling into our sinfulness and our great foolishness, etc., etc. But Jesus goes willingly to the cross, and his willing death on the cross is what wins for us forgiveness for all of our sins. That's the good news. Solomon continues, verse 24, Now, O sons, listen to me. Be attentive to the words of my mouth. Let not your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths. For many a victim she has laid low. And all her slain are a mighty throng. If you want to join a crowd, you can join the crowd of the people that have been destroyed by adultery, by the desire to sin, to have what we want now, to chase after our own desires rather than what the Lord says is good. You want to be part of that crowd? Wide is the way that leads to destruction, like Jesus said. Her house is the way to Sheol. That means the place of the dead. Really, in fact, it, in this context, it means hell. Going down to the chambers of death. So there's a crowd of sin following along the way of death, etc., etc. But then there is the way of repentance. It is not the way of sinlessness, but it is the way of knowing our sin, despairing of ourselves, and trusting in Christ. And we rejoice that he forgives, in fact, even the adulterer, and we pray that the Lord would give us the strength and the wisdom to avoid the adulterous woman. All right, there it is, Proverbs 7. We're going to take the week off next week for the celebration of the Incarnation, and then we'll be back into it in the chief chapter of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 8. All right, what do you got? You got the world be everlasting? <laughs> you got the subscribe? Oh, and here, don't forget about these Ad Crucem things. Look at this. This is the um, Magnificent card that they've got. Uh, you can go to adcrucem.com and check those things out. See you in two weeks.